Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagola. Now, if you visit Havana's Finley Institute of Vaccines, you'll find that even though some of the equipment may be a little outdated, the science itself is cutting edge. That science has helped to make Cuba a leader in health technology. It's developed global applications of genomics in healthcare, including the development of a world-class meningitis B vaccine, as well as the tetanus inoculation and a jab for diphtheria. Well, now Cuba is working on a coronavirus vaccine, which it hopes will help alleviate the COVID-19 crisis. Soberana Dos is what it's called. It's Cuba's domestically produced coronavirus vaccine made entirely in Cuba by Cuban researchers. Our vaccines are under medical trial and uh, we are trying to produce it we are creating conditions. We have a long experience in terms of vaccines. We have developed, we cover most of the vaccination needed for the immunization programs in Cuba, not only for COVID, but for different reasons. And the most, uh, the, the, the one who, who is taking the lead, which is Soberana 02, Soberana means sovereignty. So we need sovereignty in terms of so to protect our production from COVID-19 and from everything. So in the case of uh, Soberana 02, it is already on the medical trial. The one and two phases of medical trial are getting into, into an end. We are starting the third phase for medical trial. Even uh, we have already agreements uh, with Iran and Mexico because they are also partic going to participate in the third phase, phase of the medical trial, which is also very important in, for the registration of this vaccine. And from April, this year, we are hoping that Soberana 02 will finalize all the process and we will start with massive production, immunization, of commercialization of our vaccines. We have a population of about 11 million inhabitants and we are creating conditions to produce 100 uh, doses of the Soberana 02 and it has already started the industrial production of Soberana 02 still, still to test the vaccine, but in, in, in next month we, are, we have a lot of hope that, that, will be, that, that the Soberana 02 will get final approval and we will, we will be able to continue. And that's the uh, Cuban ambassador to Nigeria there, Clara Polido. For more on that Cuban COVID-19 vaccine, I'm delighted to say that she joins me now in the studio, Clara Polido. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you very much, Charles, for having me again here. Tell us more about this Soberana dose COVID vaccine. I understand it's a conjugate vaccine, um, meaning an antigen is fused to a carrier molecule to bolster the vaccine's stability and effectiveness. That is true. You are very right. It's an intramuscular vaccine. And the concept is to, uh, to immunize the population through creating conditions to avoid the key of the virus to be able to enter the, the cells. Through that, through that system, it seems that uh, the results till now in the first and second phase of uh, medical trial are enough good. And uh, well, in March, we are going to vaccinate in Cuba about 46,000 people. Uh, and as you know, we are also going to to vaccinate volunteers in, in Iran, and mm. we are in serious discussion with Mexico. In Iran, they are, they are planning to provide about 50,000 um, volunteers. We have a long story of cooperation with them in, te in terms of biotechnology. This is the reason, the main reason. We have confidence in that regard. And um, we hope that uh, from April going, and during the year 2021, we will be able to vaccinate the entire population and not only to vaccinate our entire population, even to have uh, plus production. Uh, we are creating conditions and we have the capacity to produce 100 million doses during 2021. That's a pretty significant number. And uh, as you said, there are plans to export that vaccine outside Cuba. Uh, to the rest of the world and the plan from what I've heard as you said 100 million doses but in order to do that 
Cuba is going to need the help of other countries, isn't it? Well, uh, in, in some extent, yes. In some extent, yes. And this is not the first time that Cuba uh, work in the area of, of medicines, particularly in vaccines, mm. not only for ourselves, but for the rest of the world. We have a history. By chance, Soberana uh, 02 uh, is not the only vaccine that we are um, creating for, mm. uh, for to fight uh, coronavirus. We have three other vaccines. Soberana 01 and, uh, and Abdala, which are also intramuscular, and then Mambisa, which is nasal. So they are different mm. uh, vaccines because, uh, well, um, as human beings, not, uh, ev not all every vaccine will match to everybody. No, absolutely. So and this and is very, very important to have, more, yeah. to have more than one vaccine. But, but, but what are the properties of Soberana dose? I mean, is it going to be a one dose or two dose no, vaccine? It seems that it is going to be two dose. Right, two okay. Dose, uh, but it still is in, the, is in the trial. So right. uh, still we cannot say. Uh, how many doses as a, as a final conclusion, right. but it's, it, it, has, it seems that till now uh, almost all the vaccines on their, on their research will, will need more than one, more mm. than one doses. Well, I mean, Johnson & Johnson is one dose. Well, but the majority. The right. majority. No, I agree. The and majority is. And is also two uh, another facility which is very important is that in the case of Soberana uh, 02, you can you can uh, store it in in normal uh, refrigeration conditions. Right. Okay. Not in normal temperature, but you can use a normal refrigerator to okay, right, to, to, to put right, it in. Because right. some of the vaccines that are now on the on the research, they need very special. Mm. Uh, for instance, uh, mm, mm, less than 70 degrees mm. or and something that's impractical like this. For a lot of developing absolutely, countries. absolutely. Yeah. So this is also an advantage in the case of Soberana 02, not also the security, the biotechnological security, but also the conditions to mm. store the, the vaccine. Now, we talked a moment ago that Cuba is going to need the help of other countries. Is it perhaps too early in, in the relationship with the Biden administration for the U.S. to play a role in the distribution of the Soberana dose vaccine, or is that something not being considered at all? No, till now not. Till now not. Uh, we are very open in the area of medical cooperation, particularly cooperation mm. in general, and medical cooperation in particular. And it will not be the first time that even we, we have the possibility or the capacity to try to, to do some cooperation with any country over the world, including mm. the, 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 the United States. I can remind you when during the, the fighting against Ebola, mainly in Liberia, it was a very strong cooperation because b between uh, Cuban medical personnel and, and, and U.S. personnel in order to fight Ebola in Liberia. So mm. we, we, we will never be closed in order to help other people uh, to, to, to get a better health. And as the, the leaders of our uh, research centers have been saying, uh, even if in some cases we will go into trade in order to, to commercialize these vaccines, but the main purpose is the health of the people. Mm. So uh, the, the Cuban enterprises producing those vaccines, they are two, two different uh, Cuban research centers producing the vaccines till now, and the main purpose is just to found a vaccine, able to, to, to control and to avoid the yeah, risk. Well, obviously, that's the lofty goal. Absolutely. But I mean, Cuba needs the money from selling that vaccine, doesn't no it? No doubt. Every country needs the, needs the money. No, but, but Cuba particularly the, 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 needs the, the, the money. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We particularly need it. Uh, we are very affected by the economic crisis mm. all over the world. And in our case, because of the blockade, even the, 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 the consequence for Cuba uh, in, in COVID times are even more serious. We, of course, we need uh, financial resources even to continue in production. Mm. But as I said before, as a matter of principle, when you talk about health, first of all, you talk about health after that. Business has to be you know, not, no, not I be agree. in the front No, I absolutely period. agree. We've got about 30 it's seconds before we have to take a break. What's yes. the current state of the COVID-19 outbreak in Cuba? Because at one stage last year, it seemed like it had been contained after those strict measures. Um, I, I'm just being told that we have to discuss this after the break. So I'll ask you to hold on and we'll come back and we'll talk some more about this. You're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, as we continue our chat with the Cuban ambassador to Nigeria, Clara Polito, and we turn the focus on US-Cuba relations. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles 
and Ye Golu. Now let's turn to relations between the US and Cuba and the growing pressure on the Biden administration to re-engage with Havana after four years in which President Trump systematically undid the progress that had been achieved under President Obama. The Biden government is set to review U.S. policy towards Cuba and several pro-engagement organizations within and outside the U.S. have begun lobbying Mr. Biden to reverse Donald Trump's policies towards the Caribbean island, which were heavily focused on sanctions against the country, its government and its military. There have been calls, for instance, encouraging President Biden to abandon the U.S. centerpiece policy of regime change in favor of a more incremental approach, which they say would make any changes more durable. Yes, I, uh, for the last 28 consecutive years, the international community has approved at the General Assembly of the U.N. a resolution against the blockade. And not only at the UN, at the African Union, as I said at the beginning, at CARICOM in the Caribbean area, the non-aligned movement, the group of 77 plus China, to three of these organizations, Nigeria is a member country and has also raised its voice and has also a vote in favor of Cuba. So lifting of the blockade is not only a petition from the Cuban people, it's an international uh, demand, as I said, before. There you have the list from 1992 of the voting of that resolution. Every time that the resolution came to the UN has been approved. It's not a secret, that is public. You can check it at the records of the UN. That was the votation last year. Only three countries voted against the resolution, US, Israel and Brazil. We changed the vote. Historically speaking, Brazil voted in favor of the resolution. And that's the uh, Cuban ambassador to Nigeria, Clara Polido, who is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. We're going to talk about U.S.-Cuba relations in a moment, but we were, just before we went on break, I'd asked you a question about the current state of the COVID-19 outbreak in Cuba. The situation really is, uh, is worrying to some extent regarding the, the figures that we have had, uh, we have had the, the worst figures uh, since COVID started in January and now in February. It seems that it is an international ten trend, not only in Cuba, mm, unfortunately. Obviously, obviously uh, most of the countries we have opened for some good reasons, but at the same time, the population is, is more exposed in some regard. And also it seems that most of the country's population is a little tired. The good aspect, the good aspect in our case is that our, our national health system has been able to manage and control the situation. Of, we have non-collapse. Mm. Uh, we are very... Although it's under a lot of pressure, isn't it? Absolutely, there is a lot of pressure and, and we have a system which is absolutely free of char charge for the population. It means that the cost for the, for the government, for the country, is, is very, is very mm. serious. Well, what but about, the, sorry, go on, finish what you were saying. No, no, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the important issue is that all the conditions are created and all the, all the facilities are, 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 are there in order to take all the sick people, the expenses of the state, in appropriate medical uh, right. Establishment. That's quite a lot of sick so people, though. I mean, you're getting about a thousand a day in terms of COVID. Well, it was one day. It was one day. The figure, the, the worst figures, has been about 800, 900. We have uh, close to 5,000 uh, uh, positive cases at the moment that we are talking. Right. It's less than 5,000 now. It, it, it overpassed that figure a few days ago, but uh, we managed to, to reduce it to less than 5,000. What impact has this pandemic had on the Cuban economy? Because, of course, tourism is the lifeblood of the island, and I expect the dramatic reduction in the number of travelers has left things looking rather bleak economically. The, the impact is serious for Cuba and for all the Caribbean area, not only for Cuba. So mm. in, 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 but we're in, talking in about our, Cuba. In a, yes, absolutely. We? But yeah. in our region, tourism is a, is a main is a main uh, source of, uh, of, 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 we of wealth. Right, so revenue. it means that it's, it's not only a problem for Cuba, but in the particular case of Cuba, we also have this situation, it's true, it's affecting because of the dramatical reduce of tourism. We reopened to tourism uh, since last November, 
but the, the figures are not the, the, the what, what they, they we used to have. Yeah, no, this I understand point. that. I mean, as a you said, every a country A second is point, right. a second point is that, of course, we have been conducting uh, lockdowns and open lockdowns and open according to specific situations. In some provinces, we have to, to consistently have uh, lockdowns. In some provinces, we have had the possibility to, to go more into the new normality, as it is called. Mm. And that also affects, because in some areas, you have uh, working places working on one third at half percent is a, is, a, is a real problem all over the world, not only in Cuba, but in our particular case, it, uh, it affects uh, tremendously the, right. the economy, and we have to continue managing, managing with this with this serious right. situation. Okay, well, Schooling hopefully your, your uh, vaccine will, will come up soon and, and make a difference. But earlier we mentioned the dreaded word, the United States. Uh, what are your hopes and expectations now that the Trump regime is gone and the Biden administration has been enthroned. Do you expect the relationship between Havana and Washington to improve rapidly or not? It's not so easy to improve rapidly because the last steps of the Trump administration, they, they, they took a lot of measures uh, to make things more difficult. It seems to me that not only for Cuba, but in, in several aspects, but I am not here to, to use the, the, the U any, any US mm. government. But in the particular case of Cuba, even they included Cuba in the last, the last days of the previous administration, they included Cuba in the list of states sponsoring terrorism. Yeah, which I, is, I, I have to this, say I was pretty is, shocked This at is that. a criminal, a criminal yeah, statement. I, I mean. was definitely pretty so shocked So a country that. that has never done anything against any mm. other country, the country that has not even the capacity to do bad things, the country has, that has been selling not terrorists, but mm. um, medical personnel to help in normal times and in times like Ebola or, or coronavirus, and, and the country that has even been the victim of terrorism produced from the territory of the United States for decades. So it's absolutely wrong, but definitely that, 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 that was done. So you must and have breathed a sigh of relief when you realized that your nemesis, Donald Trump, was out of the White House. Well, um, at the end of the day, it's a decision of the, of the good people of the U.S., and that is the most important mm. thing. And uh, since um, it was announced, the, the election of the new president, uh, His Excellency uh, Joe Biden, our president immediately uh, said, our president, uh, Miguel Diaz-Canel, immediately said that we are, as always, in the, best con in the best position to have any conversation, any negotiation with the government of the, of the, of the U.S. with only, not one condition, but mm. only with one right, to make any discussion as equals, to make any discussion with all due respect, one each other. And this is, this is very important for any governmental or human relation. So it seems that uh, this is what I said, this is not a precondition, it's just a, it's just a concept, it's just a, a right that every human or every country mm. has. So uh, let's hope that yes, that conditions can go back to some kind of normality. Mm, we are open, mm, we are serious in our discussions, and but it must we are always ready. It must have been pretty shocking for, for Cuba though, because first the Obama detente then a 180 degree reversal under Donald Trump. Uh, and now you've got Joe Biden and nobody's quite sure which direction he's gonna go in. Well, it seems that we need, first of all, we need to start talking as human beings has to do, mm. to talk directly. And, and also, uh, there are a lot of uh, measures that were taken under the Obama administration mm. Mm, that maybe will come back. Uh, now, now even we have petitions at the, the, the some members of the Senate and the House of Reps in the in the U.S. have even make, making petitions uh, asking to release the blockade. Even a, a law was introduced. Mm. Well, a, a draft of a law was introduced with this petition uh, at the Parliament. So it's something that if it comes into force, that will be but, but a I mean definitely a good step. Sure. Because definitely the blockade and all the legal framework that has the, the, the blockade is something that does not put an answer to any problem of nowadays. Yeah. It's but, something but, but that I mean, comes even from 
it's, it's a historical past. Yes, I understand that. But even though Mr. Biden has promised to re-engage with Cuba, do you think Cuba is high on his list of priorities? I mean, and if so, how high? Because, I mean, you could be waiting for some time before he gets around to reversing the policies that Mr. Trump imposed on, on Havana, if ever. It can take time. I, I am not in the position to tell you in, in which position we are. Right. In his police, I am not the person to be asked on that on that regard. Sorry to, for this, but uh, we are neighbors. After Canada and, Me and Mexico, who share land borders with them, we are one of the closest countries to the to the to yeah, the Yeah, no, US. absolutely. So it's it's important for but, but neighbors. I mean, in the in the in the world that we are living, neighbors has to try to to no, to, I agree. to to, but, but to, I mean to live the, in the, normal. The, the in truth normal is a, that a, ultimately, issues. whether it's Obama, Trump, or Biden, the U.S. will always try to turn Cuba into a country that the U.S. wants it to be, which is to install a political system that's in agreement with Washington. Yeah. And that's always going to be a problem. Yeah, that is true. But the problem is that you know we have a very hard history in our past and in our present, and in our future we will have. And we are people that we have fought a lot for independence, for sovereignty. This is why the, we have discussed this soberana. before, the, 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 the name of Soberana, of the vaccine, comes from that. Mm. Because even, even for those, we need sovereignty. I said here in, uh, in front of your camera before, can you imagine if the only vaccine all over the world is an American vaccine? We will never get vaccinated. <laughs> we will like not have that. the right as human beings. So sovereignty is something very important all over the world uh, and mm, we have our history and a country never abandon its history to abandon the history is uh, like to abandon the, 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 the house of your mother mm. and you never leave the, the, definitely the house of your mother this is all, all, always the, the last place where you can go so believe me that uh, we love too much independence and freedom and we are not going anywhere to tell people what do you have to do. With but, but all due respect, we share ideas, sure. we cooperate, we offer our capacities, we learn from others. So the only issue that we ask is, let us to be ourselves. We have the right Yeah, to but be that's ourselves. the problem. They don't want you to be yourself. I mean, you're, you're in America's backyard. And America fought communism uh, with the Soviet Union and all the rest of it for many, many years. It's still at loggerheads with China. And it is particularly irksome to the Americans that you're in their backyard, a tiny little pinprick off the coast of Florida, and yet you've remained defiant and impossible to bend to the will of Washington. Um, and, and it is fair to say, isn't it, that even though President Biden is, a, is different in terms of his approach, he will remain a kind of enemy to Cuba, perhaps not on the same scale as President Trump. But as long as you've got that ideological difference, you're never going to be bedfellows, are you? That is a challenge. But three decades after the history that you, come, that you have just described, we are alive, we are there, we have resisted and successfully resisted. We, we continue resisting yeah, as successful as we can. I always remember a phrase from our former, our, our leader Fidel Castro in, early in the 90s. He said that years before the collapse of the Soviet Union and the, and the, Western, and the Eastern Bloc, they were, uh, the, 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 the US administration were telling us that we were a satellite of the Soviet Union. Then when the Soviet Union changed, and we right. decided to keep our around. They were criticizing us why we are not, we were not following. Basically, you can't win. But let's so hope things improve. Ambassador Polito, Cuban ambassador to Nigeria, thank you very much. A Indeed. last word. A big thank to the African Union okay. for the resolution approved and to tell Nigeria that we are here and we are ready to cooperate with Nigeria, which okay. is our main point here. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead, including we'll speak to Stephen Linder, who as a U.S. senior trade, worked out trade agreements between the U.S., the Caribbean and Latin America, a region that Cuba is a part of. Stay with us.